Hi, I'm Laura Marwood, Product Strategist for SAP S4 HANA, and today I'm joined by Paul Saunders, an ERP thought leader with extensive experience advising customers on implementations and upgrades. Paul, what would you say to those people who suggest that ERP is outdated or old-fashioned? I would say you're wrong. Uh, e ERP is, is ERP is like music. You know, it, it's music's made up of eight notes, twelve semitones. It hasn't changed for a long, long time. But the music in the Baroque period and the music in you know the 1950s and the music in 1970s punk was very, very different. It represented the audience of the day. ERPs, I'd like to think, the, exactly the same. What we tried to do with ERP in 1972, when SAP first started, was around standardization, variability reduction, operational efficiency, and so on. And those things are still really important. Mm -hmm. But business has changed, the world has changed, your customers have changed, the expectations have changed. ERP changes along with it. Paul, in your interactions with some ECC customers, what are some of the things that have surprised them, perhaps some capabilities they weren't expecting? Talking to a, a, a customer recently, they were saying that you know, they've, they've been running ECC and other ERP solutions, competitive solutions, for a number of years. And you know, the, the product, quote unquote, works. They get product out the door at the end of the day. But it's hard for them to, to adopt anything net new. You know, in fact, they said that they hadn't done an upgrade in 11 years. And they've moved to SCP S4 HANA. And by doing so, what they can do is they can adopt what's called a clean core. So think of it as saying, there's a lot of what you do as a business that you just have to do to be in business. It doesn't differentiate you. Customers don't buy your product or service because of that. You know, think of tax and treasury and you know, accounts payable and things like that. You need to do them and you need to do them well, but they don't differentiate you. With SAP S4 HANA Cloud, what you can do is you can, you can adopt this clean core. You can standardize on those pieces. And then that frees you up to focus on what differentiates you. And that would vary by customer and by industry and so on. This company that I was mentioning, they went from not doing an upgrade in 10 or 11 years to doing an upgrade in 17 minutes. And, you know, when you think about that, you're like, well, that's, you know, having a fast upgrade, that sounds exciting to an IT person. It's not just about that. It's about the fact that when you can upgrade in 17 minutes, it means you're not disrupting your business. It means that you are taking innovations. That, I think, is the biggest argument for moving from ECC to S4 HANA, or for any solution to S4 HANA, is being able to drive innovative value that then differentiates you to your customers. And what would you say to those customers who are dubious or skeptical about transitioning to the cloud? The question would be, is it dubious? Are they skeptical? Are they scared? Are they nervous? And the only way to, to, to really deal with it is to say, what am I trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. And will cloud help me get there? And we know we've seen this for 20 plus years now that cloud is the great leveler of, of, of companies. And, and then why am I scared? Is it because I don't really want to change because I'm a little worried about change and cloud seems to be changed? Do I feel that we know that the security challenges of cloud have long been dispelled? I mean, mm -hmm. cloud companies, companies like SAP, we run security very, very well. We know that the cost pieces have been dispelled. We know that the scalability pieces have been dispelled. So all of these things, the benefits of cloud, they're factual. And when do ECC customers have to move to SAP S4 HANA? So SAP isn't dictating that anybody has to do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the, uh, the big differentiators, I think, between SAP and, and our competitors. When should a customer want to move? And when will it have the most value to move? That's, you know, where we work with the customer to tease that out. From a, from a maintenance point of view, you know, we will be, uh, ECC will be moving to the end of standard support over the next few years. Now, a customer can still go with extended support if they want to, but it really comes down to, to thinking about, is my business today not going to change? Mm. And I can't think of a single company or in a single ind industry that you can say that that's going to be true.
So it, you should never dictate your business strategy based on what a vendor is doing. You should dictate your business strategy on what the market is doing, what your customers are doing, and what you as a company are doing. And when you talk to ECC customers, what are some of their concerns around transitioning to the cloud? Any transformation or any transition for, for, for a company involves people, process, and technology. Mm -hmm. So the technology piece with cloud, I think, used to be a bit of a, a concern. People say, oh, you know, is cloud good? Is it, is it secure? And so on. I think we now know the clouds, it works. It works fine. You know, then you've got the process piece. The process piece and the people piece are normally tied in quite closely together because the process piece says, this is how we do something. And it might be, this is how we do something, but that might not necessarily be the best way for us to do it. And we can help them with things like Signavio to say, this is how you do something. And actually, this is the best way you can do stuff. And then that comes to the last piece, the people piece. There's always been a view, I think, that people don't like change. That is completely wrong. People are absolutely fine with change. People don't like being changed. Mm -hmm. And where you see the most successful ERP and transformation stories is where people are involved, where you've got this diversity of, of, of thought coming into it to say, where are we going? How do we get there? And what's my role to play in it? And of those three pieces, which is typically the most challenging for customers in your experience? 95% um, of the time, it's the people piece. Mm -hmm. When you get used to doing things one way, it's very, very hard to say, well, actually, maybe there is a different way of doing things. When you look at things like, um, you know, Rise with SEP, um, the value there, I think, is that we can take away a lot of the complexity and the risk of the technology piece mm -hmm. and the process piece which then frees that company up more to focus on the people piece. And our partners can come in and help and say, these are all the great things that you can do with change leadership. This is the way you inspire people. Nobody gets up in the morning and says, oh, great, I'm going to start an ERP project. But what they can do is to say, you know, oh, great, I'm starting my journey to be the best company that I can be to achieve my strategic goals and so on. How do you see the future of collaborative ERP evolving? You know, you think about why we put in ERP in the first place all those decades ago was to try and get people within different part departments of a business to work together. And so we had common data models and common processes and so on. But business today is very, um, it's very collaborative and it's, it's very um, message driven. And I don't mean that in a technical way, I just mean that something pops up, an email or a text or something else, and people respond to it. Um, and sometimes, you know, you want to be able to have a, a quick informal conversation with somebody. So when you look at some of the things that SEP has been doing together with Microsoft, for example, mm -hmm. um, so you've got somebody using Microsoft Teams, you've got somebody using SAP S4 HANA, you can bring those two things together. And this, this is a great example, I think, of where technology is going, where business is going, where the world's going, where you've got two of the biggest software companies in the world, SAP and Microsoft, not saying my product's better than your product, you know, my company's better than your company, but by saying when we can put the two things together, our customers really benefit. You know, I think the days of, of, of companies standing up on stage saying, I'm great, you know, I make the best software, your software sucks, those days are over. It's collaboration at, at all levels between businesses, between departments, between competitors. So the future of ERP is collaborative. The future of business is collaborative. The future of work is collaborative. And ERP is a representation of business and of what the future of work looks like. So absolutely, it's collaborative. Paul, this has been great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much, Laura. It's been great.